Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your true heel phenom, SP3. We are back once again with an exclusive interview for True Heels BTR Between the Ropes. This time we are with Nick Houseman of Wrestling Inc. and Warrior Wrestling. The, the golden voice of Warrior Wrestling is with us. Thank you for joining us, good sir. My pleasure, SP. Yeah, the golden voice, man. Uh, don't tell Bikini that. <laughs> He's, I'm really to, he, he's very he's a very emotional guy and he may be genuinely upset to hear the praise heaped on me so i appreciate the kind words absolutely thank you yeah I, I, i'm all about the true hill heat and if you know you know the, the tension between commentators it, it made gorilla and bobby great it's gonna make you guys great yeah well screw him i'm obviously <laughs> the golden voice you're right i'm just telling you <laughs> i hurt feelings well, thank you so much for joining us. This is a part of our special Warrior Wrestling Week as we lead up to Friday Night Lights this coming Friday, August 7th. If you're not in the Chicago area, the limited seats are available. But if you're not in Chicago, you can order it on Fight TV. But I'm first, you know, before anything, for the viewers at home, push that like button, push the i-card down at the bottom to subscribe and the bell to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. But Nick, how are you dealing with the crazy times in this world during this pandemic? Um, honestly, my life isn't like that different. I mean, I don't get to go out to like bars and like places with my girlfriend as much, but I already work from home. I run WrestlingInc.com. I'm the managing editor of WrestlingInc.com day to day. Uh, my girlfriend has had to start working from home. And so, you know, that was a little adjustment there, but that's fine. Uh, she's actually back in her office today. Um, but uh, no, I mean, for me, you know, I was already kind of used to working at home. The biggest difference for me is I love going out and covering shows live. Um, I go to all the AEW shows. I've always in the press pool for that. And it's uh, it's starting to wear on me that I haven't been out in the field in a while. You know, like I'm getting, I'm, I remembered how many interviews I used to source out in the field. I remember what it was like to be in those scrums. And uh, that part stinks, but I, I, I'm pretty blessed. I, I, my life really hasn't changed that much. We both are, you know, still healthy, knock on wood. And, you know, we have jobs out of our home. So, I mean, we don't have twins, children, you know, like I know a little of what's going on in your world. And like that, that you are dealing with more than we are, my friend, right now. So don't worry about us. Well, you, you, you need the extra time if you're running one of the, the top wrestling websites in Wrestling Inc. But the first, yeah. before we get into Wrestling Inc. specifically, how did you get into the, the crazy world of professional wrestling? And what's like your earliest memory that made you a wrestling fan? Oh, man. Um, well, my earliest memories of wrestling were definitely like, you know, upstairs at my grandma's house watching wrestling because she had cable and we didn't have cable. Um, and then like, you know, I was real young, like Duke, the dumpster Drosy and like the goon were like some of the first like main, that was like my era, like 90, a great era, 94, real 93, hot, hot, hot time for pro wrestling at that time. Um, but, um, you know, I lived through the attitude era in my pro in my formative years, which was wonderful. And uh, I actually moved to Chicago to get into comedy and I did comedy for a long time and I wound up. Uh, teaching comedy, and I wound up uh, getting put in touch with Colt Cabana right after he got fired from WWE, and we did some work together, and then he uh, uh, in, in, uh, introduced me to some wrestling people, and I was a manager for several years, and then I kind of faded out of comedy, and uh, then after a couple bad bumps, because I'm not very athletic, I was like, you're going to die if you keep doing this, because you're a comedian, and you really probably shouldn't be falling down all the time. Um, and that's when I made the choice to pivot and make funny jokes about pro wrestling, which is what which is what pro wrestling journalism largely is, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, I've been very, very fortunate the last uh, four years I've spent uh, in, in manager roles. Uh, I was I spent two years as the executive editor for WrestleZone. And then uh, I'm coming up on my two year mark here as the managing editor for Wrestling Inc., and um, uh, it's been wonderful working with Raj Geary, the, the president and owner of Wrestling Inc., a great partner, great friend. Um, I'm still learning a lot every day. And um, that is the broad strokes, SP. That's where we are. And then the, and along the way, I did a little commentary for Black Label Pro and met Rich Bikini and 
that's how I got involved with Warrior, you know, whatever, two years ago or so, I guess it feels like, I think it is at this point. So. Uh, that's a pretty awesome strokes that you're, 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 you're giving us of your, your whole story and background. What would you say, though, doing, being a comedian, what would you sure. say is the, and you've been a manager, you've done the bumps, what would you say is the harder crowd to deal with? Uh, the crowd at a comedy uh, club or the crowd in a wrestling event? Com- comedy club, 100%. Comedy, because comedy fans, they show up and they're like, impress me. Like, and there are some people that don't like comedy shows that'll come with a significant or other. You know, you really got to wear them out. You got to win them over. I did a couple bar mitzvah buyouts where you go perform for the most obnoxious little kids. Um, you know, but a wrestling crowd, man, you show up and the people are there and they're like, "In, I'm here. I, I want, I want you to succeed. I want to enjoy you. You know, there's snarky wrestling fans and stuff, but even they show up, I think, and they want to be having a good time. And so you go out there, you yourself, you. You, you, you play to your strengths. You, you have fun with your friends. Wrestling wrestling crowds, man, they'll go along for the ride. Comedy fans are fickle. hundred percent. Way, way, way more fickle than, than wrestling fans. Yes, I, I tried my best in the in the comedy field, and it did not work out well for me. So I admire I'm, you, good sir. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> you know, it, go, go try it again. You know, it's like I feel like every seven years, your brain resets, and you, like, see things differently, and, you know, you get jokes differently. Never give up, man. SP, if you want to do the comedy thing, continue on, man. Don't never give up ever. So, what would you say doing the wrestling journalist uh, form of the field? What has been like the biggest difference from being a wrestling fan to becoming a wrestling journalist? I know you're able to tell more jokes about the about this business, but what would you say is like the biggest difference outside of that? You get to know these people. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you get to know these people, you get to know these companies. Um, as a, on a journalism side, it's always a very unique balance because you want to have journalist integrity. You want to be able to approach things, ask the hard questions that need to be asked. But at the same time, uh, like, there's a lot of politics in it. Like, you have to stay good friends with, like, PR reps or different, you know, people in the business to maintain those relationships. And, like, as a fan, you just kind of show up and you're like, I paid you $20. You owe me a good time. When you're in the business, you kind of have to show up and be like, okay, how do I maintain my time here right now? You know, it's a lot of interpersonal stuff. And, you know, yeah, just getting to know the the individuals more as people and less as just like these cardboard cutouts is probably the biggest for, for better and for worse. I'll say that much. So. So, so I, I have to point out, because I know the people who are at home are probably admiring your background. Uh, sure. You have quite the layout behind you, sir. I like the Darth Vader helmet. I like, I like the Andre the Giant poster. We got Braun, Brock, and Kane from that Ro- Royal Rumble. I was actually at that one, 2018. I remember that very well. Uh, what about this figure collection? I see, I see, uh, am I seeing Owen Hart back there? Yeah, yeah. The King um, of Hearts. Yeah, these uh, these are just a couple. Of, so these are just childhood action figures I brought with me when I moved to Chicago. Yeah, this is a uh, Owen Hart. Obviously, they weren't doing facial scans at this point because I don't think he looks anything like Owen Hart. But uh, the trucks are accurate. Uh, my favorite action figure though is easily this Bob Backlund, right? You know, and I have a Bob Backlund. I have Triple H. But wait, no, H. I love the Bob Backlund. Oh my God! Look at that! You're taking me back. You are taking me back to another time in my life. I I have my collection at my mother's house, so I'm very jealous right now. <laughs> let me get my let me get my stuff closer to the microphone so I can say. Oh, did I lose him? No, no, he's in here somewhere. Oh man, I'll find him later. I have a I have a Clarence Mason that I've been oh waiting to display. God. There he is. There he is. Nope, that's not him. Oh, no. No, I've got him around here. I probably put him on a shelf or somewhere because I was really proud of him. But yeah, with all the new Nation of Domination stuff that's been coming up, I was like, oh, he should be on your display portion of it right now. But... Oh, yep. there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> nice. He got fell behind. Yeah, there's Clarence Mason. And it was like... I had that one. I don't know where mine is at, so I admire the fact that... And they, and they have dual suits. It's a, it's a Bob has the better tie. Well, and, well, yeah, and, like, I was really looking at him the other day. Clarence is also a little trimmer than Bob. Okay. okay. And, this is, and Clarence has a double-breasted suit, single-breasted, mm. and then Bob doesn't have any buttons for some reason on his shirt. So I think it's, like, some kind of Velcro strip down the or, front. I don't know. 
Or sure. maybe it's one of those where you just button the top one and you can't see the button because he has the tie there. But I love Clarence making Mason being brought out. We do a series called True Rewind where we're going back in time to the Monday Night War to the beginning. Yeah. So we just saw the introduction of Clarence Mason as the lawyer for British Bulldog and Jim Cornette. And after uh, they got screwed at uh, the, gr- the Great White North in your house. So I love the Clarence Mason shout out right there. <laughs> oh, dude, every one of these things in that box, it has a memory. You pull it out, you know, different memory. So that's a wonderful thing about action figures. And then the rest of it, yeah. You know, I used to do the... Uh, 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 well, I still do. We're in a pandemic right now, but when we're up and running uh, and we can have bars open, I do the WWE Blast area where we'll show the pay-per-views and give away prizes and stuff. Nice. And so that's where I, I stole all these posters from those events, from the bars and stuff. Or I guess they, they knew I had them, but I didn't pay for any of these posters. And, um, Sweet. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And you got the smoking skull boat and the, the, the big eagle. So I love it. I love it. And it's yeah. The classic ones that you would get at the event. So you are you are a classic individual and a true wrestling fan. We'd love to see that. But yeah. tell us how you got like uh, with the uh, wrestle wrestling Inc. What has been like your biggest difference? You say you're going on like two years with Wrestling Inc. Working with yeah. Rod Gary, who's one of the top uh, journalists in my opinion when it comes to uh, covering professional wrestling. What has been like the biggest difference between working there, working with Wrestle Zone, and that part of your field? Um. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I work a lot harder for Raj than I did at WrestleZone. Um, I, when I took over as manager for WrestleZone, the people that run WrestleZone, um, not not the people that run the WrestleZone site, uh, Bill Pritchard's a great guy, everybody that works at WrestleZone, the site, uh, the people that own WrestleZone, the company Mandatory, um, they're not inherent, and you know, good people at Mandatory as well. I'm not really complaining, I'm just describing what, what I did. They, they're they not in the wrestling business. They're in the men's lifestyle business. So, like, WrestleZone is, like, a tentacle for them. It's not the brain of the operation. Yeah. So I was largely just maintaining. You know, I was, like, assigning a lot of stuff. But, like, you know, they, they had me doing a lot of paperwork and, you know, different things. Um, at Wrestling Inc. now with Raj, Raj is obviously, you know, the site was founded in 97, most traffic independent pro wrestling news website on the planet. Raj has seen and done everything when it comes to pro wrestling news, and he's it's his whole life. Um, so there's a higher expectation there on on the work you have to put out to be a part of the team. Uh, I do a lot of I do a lot more interviews. I work with a lot more writers on getting my content transcribed and turned into posts. Working on features. Um, when we were up and running, uh, you know, one of my big things that I wanted to do was be out at shows and be in the press scrums and covering it. So Raj uh, sends me out to. I mean. There are very few things where I've been like, hey, I think I should be here, where he's like, we're not going to pay for that. 90% of the time, I would say he's like, oh, great, you want to go? Cool, sends me out. I get interviews, I get content. It's great for the site. You know, I'm very, I'm much busier and I'm more engaged, probably happier at wrestling. <laughs> you know, so. that, that's what we wanted to hear. Your happiness is the key there when it comes to any job. <laughs> But I'm happy. So <laughs> you do the a podcast with them as well. You've done several uh, interviews, I know. So what would you say has been the best interview that you've done, whether it's with wrestling or being a wrestling journalist in general? What would you say is the one that lead your your most memorable in your opinion? Man, um, well, I did one of Rocky Johnson's final interviews, and that one is that. That one stays with me. That's The Rock's dad. Yeah. And uh, I read his autobiography and we like talked about his career. Um, I, I mean, it changed my best. Interview, that one's very memorable. I did. I interviewed Ric Flair here about a month ago and I've interviewed Rick several times and he was just so fired up about like all these reports that he thought were bullshit about WWE, like the way they're being run right now and chaos at raw tapings. And he like, decided to tell me Charlotte was going to be like taking time off before it had been announced or like she had done any of this. Please. So like, anyway, like Rick just <laughs> Rick broke a lot of news in about 45 minutes to me. And I have to say that was a, that was also a very, very memorable interview. Um, I don't know. I've done so many interviews at this point. I, I, I have like favorite people. I like to interview. Like, I guess Jimmy Corderas is one of my favorite people to talk to 20 plus year referee. Smart dude, doesn't mind being candid, uh, always love talking to him. And, like, of course, Justin Labar, fellow journalist of mine. I do two shows a week with him. He's still one of my favorite people to talk to. 
So I don't know. I'll say Rock. I'll say Rocky Johnson, Ric Flair. Those will be my two. So. I like it. I like, and you and you're breaking news in your interviews. You love to see that. And that, yeah, I did. I did catch that that interview with Ric Flair. That was a good one because <laughs> Rick was you. 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 I don't. I. 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 I, I use this word a lot, but you triggered him. You tri- You got him. Get. You got him going. <laughs> I, well, that's the thing. Is like Rick is, and like I. I like Rick a, a lot. You know, we've, I've interviewed him several times, and I just never heard him like that. I'd never heard him just like so fired up and like he came with an agenda wanting to talk and i was like oh that's crazy I, I i i was very happy with the jake roberts interview i got to do recently where he talked about moving out of ddp's home and getting his own place i think in like oklahoma and just like hearing jake roberts talk about becoming like grandpa jake and like not needing a a, a babysitter anymore and like being on his own two feet and finally like reaching the end of the cycle of like abuse he put it that was really powerful for me too um i don't know a lot of great interviews you're hitting great- it on on so many different levels i love it but you also are a commentator like we said before and we're here to talk about warrior wrestling what's been like the biggest thing that stands out to you warrior re- working with uh warrior wrestling because to me i've been saying it to a couple of people that i've been interviewing so far that's a part of this show it just really feels like early 2000s ring of honor where it's bringing in the best professional wrestlers from like uh, even even a big promotions like ae and they're all intersecting here in this promotion and it's yeah. not even it's not even an ongoing thing it's like a four four a year so it's very like big shows it's like an all-star game so what would you say is like the big thing about warrior that stands out um well the professionalism uh steve tortello the legitimate principal of marian catholic um could not be doing a better job running the ship uh i've been a part of a lot of independent wrestling promotions i've never seen anything on the level on the indies uh like what happens at warrior just uh, from the treatment of the wrestlers i mean from pay to locker rooms or showers to catering you know all the precautions obviously that are going to be taken here on friday night lights uh this friday night um, but yeah, the absolute professionalism and, you know, that's the thing is that's the reason why warrior gets to have all these crazy, like uh, dream matches and these great professionals come in is because of the reputation, you know, um, the way that the wrestlers talk about warrior wrestling amongst themselves is a, a very, very high standard. And, um, you know, I'm very, I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm very happy to be commentator. I still consider myself a bit of an amateur commentator cause I've done, I did managing for so many years. I've only maybe called at this point 30 40 wrestling shows with warrior included and uh you know for me personally like when rich bikini who's a good friend of mine asked me to do this with him for the first show and i didn't really know what was happening it all sounded too good to be true which it it was it i mean it it is it's just too good it's not too good to be true it's just a very good promotion um getting to getting to work with somebody who spent time on the big stage knew the mechanics of actually how to commentate um that's very exciting for me, and I've learned a lot from Rich, and uh, I hope uh, I know that people enjoy our work, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, but I still feel like I'm, I'm learning so much every show from Rich, um, and uh, it's great to be able to grow with him and the promotion. It's a very fruitful professional atmosphere that I'm very proud of that we have at Warrior. So. Love to hear it, and I love being a part of it. True Hill yep, yep. is our first event that we're sponsoring, so I'm so happy that yep. we're a part of this whole this whole big movement and one of the first big event independent wrestling events in Chicago. So this is huge. So I want to talk a, a little bit about this card. So I'll start off with the match that we're sp- actually sponsoring, which is, as Frank the Clown has told us, we did an interview with uh, Frank as well. He says, this is the people's main event. It's for the Warrior Wrestling World title as Brian Pillman Jr. makes his first title defense against Robert Anthony with Frank the Clown. And this is a rivalry that's been going on for quite some time. So being behind the commentating booth, what is your thoughts on this match and how long it's been going on in Warrior Wrestling? First of all, Frank the Clown, smartest man in pro wrestling. So whatever he says, take to heart. Um, Brian Pillman Jr. is an incredible legacy thoroughbred, not to be messed with. Uh, showing up at AEW, he's got he's showing up in OVW. I just got that press release about an hour ago. Um, he's obviously still with MLW. A lot going for him, a lot of momentum here. Uh, with Robert Anthony, I've known Ego for over a decade now. And... Um, uh, 
it's wild for me watching the ride that he's had and just now really finding like a, a mainstream outlet, right? Because he's been doing so much work with AEW and AEW Dark. And I've been trying to get an interview with Rob, and Rob's a longtime friend of mine. And um, he, I know, is very frustrated because he's getting this opportunity to show himself, but he is losing really at every, like, he's gotten a chance to tangle with the best. He's lost every time, you know? So I think there's something to be said here about Rob walking into this match, um, not just wanting to make a point, but like make a statement. Like, I think he's really, I think he's got a big chip on his shoulder. And, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't be too comfortable if I was Brian Pillman here walking into this with Rob. So, yeah, this one, this one is very like personal. I saw Brian Pillman's, uh, his promo on, uh, on his Twitter page to, earlier today. Yeah. He's, he is passionate about this. He says he's bulletproof. He is clown proof. What would you, and your, your big words for, uh, Frank the Clown, what do you think about Frank the Clown's role in independent wrestling, especially in the Chicago area? He's a, he's a, he's a smart individual, like you said. Like we learned so much about him and how he thinks, even from him being a fan in the crowd and just coming up with the idea to be a clown at the WWE events to get attention and then to transition that to now he's a manager and one of the key heat magnets in warrior wrestling what are your yeah. thoughts on Frank well uh, I gave Frank the clown his first shot in pro wrestling uh, I brought him to freelance wrestling to do the pre-show uh, I was told that was a bad idea I was told that nobody wanted to work with Frank the clown after uh Frank was picked up from that appearance to main event, the uh, Robert uh, Ego Anthony versus Ego, uh, where was it, Ethan Page, Ethan Ego Page, whatever he calls himself, all ego, the battle of the egos. Um, and after that, I was like, well, you guys got to keep Frank around. Frank's, Frank's a money draw here. And they balked at it, right? And it was really stupid on Freelance's part to, to let Frank dangle out there, I thought, like that. It is good that they've had the temerity to bring him back and let him do what he does. Um, Frank is not to be messed with. He's been overestimated or underestimated, underestimated for as long as people have seen him in the, in the audience. Uh, very bright guy, and um, I think that Frank will be making uh, memories for wrestling fans for uh, many, many years to come. Absolutely, I agree with you there. He is he is our true heel. We like to call him that. And, oh, <laughs> and w w the other big main event matchup that a lot of people are talking about with this show is, of course, the the dream match between Jeff Cobb and Brian Cage. This is ROH, ROH New Japan Pro Wrestling meets AEW, two of the biggest hosses in the game. How yeah. how much are you looking forward to this matchup? Oh, dude, this is this is it, man. This is this is pro wrestling. This is big dudes, tons of athleticism, a uh, lot of notoriety. I mean, this is it for me. I mean, I, when people are asking me what I'm excited for on this show, obviously, you know, the main event, Brian and and, and Rob, and the, you know, there's all these other crazy, awesome matches. I mean, you got Janela here, you got Lance Archer yes. on this show as well. But Brian Cage and Jeff Cobb in their primes. Only a place like Warrior Wrestling could happen. I don't really feel I need to say too much. It speaks for itself. But it's going to be, yeah, barn burner, to say the least. So what would you say is the matchup that not too many people will be, like, talking about going into this event that all the people will be talking about after this event on Fight TV? Um, I think Lance Archer, Sam Adonis will probably surprise people. You know, Sam is one of those guys internationally that's just so well known, like in Japan and Mexico, he really made a name for himself. And here in the States, he hasn't really had a chance to resonate. I don't think quite the same way. Um, but the same could be said for Lance Archer up until, you know, a year and a half, two years ago before he broke yeah. out, um, of new Japan killer lead squad with Davey boy and all that, you know, with the Davey leaving the company, all that. But so I think that, I think that. Sam is really going to impress. I think people are going to be very impressed by what Sam and Lance put together here. And uh, I just, you know, I, I love Sam. I think that he's a very, very talented guy. Um, I hope that this is a chance for him to really take a moment here to show people what he and Lance are capable of. Both. Absolutely. I, and that was one I definitely wanted to mention because Sam Adonis is, is like one of the warrior wrestling, like, key stalwarts he's been on every show from from what everybody's been telling me and he's a guy that i said i said with uh we did a preview show with steve and wrestling travel he has the look of a professional wrestler he is a wrestler's wrestler you could see him out at the like they always said you see him out in the grocery store and you would see he's a professional wrestler 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's a stacked card. I mean, from bottom, I mean, we have, I mean, you can talk about War Horses there. You even talk yes. about the Rascals is there. You know, this is a, it's a big, it's a big show. It's a big show, to say the least. And I'm very much looking forward to it. But we got to also talk about you some more, sir. This is true heel heat. So we'd love to ask question about your your historical heel moment. What is like the most memorable heel moment you remember in your in your entire time following professional wrestling? Uh, the most heat. Um, oh, 100 percent. The most heat that I have ever witnessed in my entire life i was at the raw show in was it yeah it was new york the night after roman reigns beat the undertaker and that (laughs) and you know it was at orlando 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 florida okay you're right sorry yeah it all blurred it's all a blur to me but yeah you're right it was the big open stadium i'm sorry they all look the same to me yeah it was in orlando and i remember like showing up and they sent me the <laughs> they sent us up into the press box and the press box was and you know it's it's very rare that the pro wrestling press is actually given proper press you know rooms and things like that so we're all up at the top of the arena like the press was like the top row and so like roman reigns comes out to start the show and if you remember there's like 15 minutes of nothing but the audience just booing to the point this guy can't even talk and he just says like Big dog run the yard, whatever he said, walked away. You know? It's my yard now. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. But like, but because we were like at the top part of it, all of that noise was like it was like a it was like standing right next to a gigantic bass speaker. <laughs> like I've never felt or heard more heat in my entire life than that. hundred percent. That's my biggest heat moment. As, as far as like events I've been to and seen heat, that was by far the biggest. I, I absolutely agree with you. I was also there live for that event, probably oh, cool. not, that, not that far down from the, from the press box. And I remember we were big. We had our True Hill shirts and we were cheering Roman because Roman oh. was the biggest heel in the business after defeating. Dude, the so, you know, dude, that was crazy, man. That was like I felt the like building shaking. I was like, I think they're going to break this place right now, you know? Uh, and it was such a big difference because if you remember the five minutes before Roman comes out, it's a whole big Undertaker, just nothing but love from the Undertaker. And then the minute they the first the first riff of Roman song hits, it's nothing but heat for the next 10 to 15 minutes. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great. It was a good moment. So what good would moment. you what would you say is your favorite heel in in the business in your in your entire time being a fan being a journalist who is the best heel you have ever seen? Well, that's a good question. Um, ta, ta, ta. Uh, the best. I mean, like Orton. Orton's really really good right now and has been for a while. You know, I mean, it's like every little head nod and and look and glance. And, you know, I think back to the stuff we did at Triple H. Or it would be a pretty, he'd be, he'd be, he's one of the first that comes to my mind when I think just like heels, people you don't like, you know? (laughs) Especially, especially now, I feel like he's like, it's uh, amazingly at the top of his game and just hit another level with this rivalry with Edge. Now he's going up against Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. So that's a very good choice. I love it. Yeah, I mean, Frank the Clown's also up there. Um, I mean, at that freelance pre-show, man, and we brought him out cold, and I was just teasing a huge reality show star was going to appear, and when Frank came out in front of about 150 diehard freelance wrestling fans, I thought he was going to get stabbed or something. It was incredible. That was a lot of heat, too. wasn't as loud as the Roman thing, but the wrestling fans really do not like Frank the Clown. I, I I don't I don't understand. Frank is such a great guy, but but yes, he he just knows how to get under people's skin, and I and I love him for it. <laughs> yeah. So finally, tell the people where they can uh, follow you, where they can listen to you, follow your work, and of course, a final plug for Warrior Wrestling Friday Night Lights. Sure, yeah, I'm at House Rebel H A U S Rebel over on Twitter. Uh, you can find me Monday through Friday over on the Wrestling Inc. I N C Daily podcast on iTunes. Go subscribe everywhere. It's been a great. We had Dave Meltzer on yesterday. We had Rocky Romero on today. I'll have DDP on tomorrow. So five days a week, interviews, commentary, punditry, the Wrestling Inc. Daily, WrestlingInc.com, and of course, it's Friday night. Uh, if you can't be there in person. Uh, and there's, you know, good reasons to not be there. But there's, you know, if you're near and you, you're feeling comfortable and you're safe and you're healthy, come on by. 
Uh, but go over to fight.tv, uh, order the show. Um, I know we are running a promo code contest over on the Wrestling Inc. Twitter account right now. So if you are hoping to score a free promo code to not have to pay a single dollar to watch Warrior Wrestling, uh, you can head over to the Wrestling Inc. Twitter channel. I know that that is running right now. And, um, and that's it. That's everything. That's all I got. Love it. Thank you so much for your time, Nick. Thank you. you. You were a great guest, great interview. So you guys go out there, follow Nick online on this Twitter page, Wrestling Inc. Daily Podcast, and of course, Warrior Wrestling Friday Night Lights this Friday, August 7th. If you can't be in the Chicago area, order it on Fight TV. And like Nick said, you can follow the Wrestling Inc. Twitter page and try to get a free promo code. Free is always best, you know? But... Do it the right way. And finally, once again, press that like button. Show your support to this video and to our YouTube channel, the iCard down at the bottom to subscribe and the bell to stay notified. So for <laughs> Nick Houseman of Wrestling Inc. and Warrior Wrestling, it is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. This has been True Hills BTR Between the Ropes. We are signing off until next time.